don't worry this is not going to be overly scientific not overly complicated in fact it's going to be the opposite we're going to break it down make it super simple and super easy to really understand hair porosity let's go hey youtube fam welcome back to my channel or if you're new my name is Alyssa marie welcome Today we are going to be going over everything to do with hair porosity and don't get nervous I promise I'm going to break it down and make it super super simple and easy to understand So we're just going to be going over what exactly hair porosity actually is How to figure out what your hair porosity is and then I'm going to give you all types of product suggestions Based on your hair porosity type. It's going to be a good one But before we jump in please do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel Just go ahead hit that little notification bell as well if you want to get a notification every single time a new video drops and now let's get started so let's start at the very beginning with the little basics what exactly is hair porosity and simply put hair porosity is just your hair's ability to retain moisture that's it how well can your hair absorb and retain moisture so there are three different levels there's gonna be low porosity mid porosity and high porosity so porosity comes from the word pores and yes we're basically talking about our hair's pores so the way that you have pores in your skin that allow you to absorb moisture that way your hair also has pores which are also known as cuticles and depending on how open or closed your cuticles are in your hair that is going to depend whether or not your hair is able to absorb and retain a lot of moisture or just a little bit still with me all right so when you have low porosity hair, your cuticles are gonna be a little bit more shut. And because of this, it's a little bit more difficult for water and moisture to get into the hair shaft. And as you guessed it, high porosity is the exact opposite. So those cuticles in high porosity hair are super, super wide open. So they're able to absorb moisture immediately. But the thing about that is the door is still wide open, so moisture can leave just as quickly as it comes in as well. So mid porosity is, as you guessed it again, in the middle between the two. They kind of call that like the normal, perfect hair. If you don't have any extreme issues with your hair, then you can usually just basically call yourself mid porosity. So there are a number of different funky little tests that you can do in order to figure out what your hair porosity type is. The most popular one is called the float test. And basically what you do is fill up a glass of water, you pluck out a hair from your head, or you could just grab some hair from your brush when you brushed it last and stick it in the cup. So if you have low porosity, they say that your hair will float for a really long time before it actually sinks to the bottom. Mid porosity, it'll sink and then it'll stay at about mid level in the cup before it actually sinks to the bottom. And then high porosity hair just soaks up the water immediately and sinks the fastest. There are issues with this test though. A lot of people have actually said that when they put their hair on top of the water, it just sits there. Many different people with different hair types have actually seen that from this test. So really what I like to suggest when you're really looking to try and figure out your hair type is to listen to your hair. And I know you guys have heard me say this a thousand times, but it is so, so important to really, really listen to your hair. So I'm about to go through all of the characteristics and product suggestions for both low and high porosity hair types. So that way you'll be able to know what to look out for when you're trying to listen to your hair and figure out what it needs. All right, so let's just get into this a little bit deeper. Let's go ahead and start with the low porosity hair type. So low porosity hair is going to be your more dry, brittle kind of hair type. It is protein sensitive and also prone to build up very, very easily. So you'll find that by day two or three, if you're continuing to put product back in your low porosity hair every day, you'll find that your hair will just get more and more limp and just kind of like stiff with like tons of products. Because those cuticles are so closed, those products will tend to just sit on top of your hair. And then you're layering and layering and layering and then you just have a major build up problem and you definitely don't want that. Low porosity hair is also known to take a lot longer to get fully wet when you're in the shower. So on wash day, you're in the shower, you're trying to wash your hair. If you just stick your head under the shower and you notice that it still feels pretty poofy, doesn't feel fully drenched immediately and it takes a few minutes, like a little bit of scrunching underneath the water and everything to then get it fully drenched, then you most likely are low porosity. Again, it just really makes sense because those cuticles are so closed, it's really hard for that water to actually get in. So that's why it takes longer for your hair to get fully drenched. So because of this, low porosity hair is really gonna need lightweight products that are still rich in moisture. You're also going to need products that are protein free since low porosity hair, like I said, is protein sensitive. It can actually 
cause more dryness and frizziness and that brittle feeling in your hair that you just definitely don't want. So yeah, lightweight, protein-free products that still allow a good amount of moisture. I do have to point out that even though low porosity hair is protein sensitive, you still wanna make sure that you are gonna achieve a moisture protein balance in your hair. So I'm not saying to completely cut protein out of your life forever because you're still gonna need that, but definitely not as often as somebody with high porosity would need it. So if you do have low porosity, I would suggest doing a protein treatment every one to two months and then all the rest of the time you are surging your hair with moisture. Water-based products are also gonna be your best friend because they're a lot more lightweight and they're water soluble. So when you're ready to wash them out, they just wash right out pretty easily. So you're gonna to wanna to check on the back of your products, check that little ingredients list and make sure that water is the first thing listed on that list. Those lists are actually listed in order of amount of ingredient in the product. So when you see water first, you know that majority of the product is made out of water. And a little styling technique that you can do in order to try and help your products be better absorbed into your hair is actually style your hair with heat. And I know I'm constantly saying that heat is a bad thing and it definitely is, but the heat that I'm talking about is heat from a diffuser. Still low heat, but heat nonetheless. So when you're using heat, it kind of encourages your cuticles to open just a little bit more. And so that way the product has easier access to get absorbed into the hair shaft. Now don't go crazy with the heat. Okay, when you're using a diffuser, always use low heat. Like I usually suggest using the lowest heat setting possible. So that way it's just a little bit of warmth that will still encourage the cuticles to open, but then also won't really be damaging your curls as well. So let's get into some actual product suggestions for my low porosity girls. So first, I want to suggest this Curlsmith Weightless Air Dry Cream. It is so good. So this is actually really lightweight, and in fact, it actually says it's a naturally lightweight and build-up free product, so that's awesome. I also really love the fact that when you actually comb this into your curls while they're wet, it just it's so juicy and delicious. So the moisture is still there, but the consistency is very lightweight. Another leave-in that I love is this Care Care Curl Essence Moisturizing Leave-In Conditioner. I talk about this all the time. I actually did an entire video on lightweight but super moisturizing leave-in conditioners. They're my current favorites. So if you wanna hear about these products and another one in like a lot more depth, then just check this video out up here. I will also link it in the description box below. The moisture treatment that I would suggest is also by Curlsmith and this is their Double Cream Deep Quencher. This is nothing but intense moisture. There is very, very little protein in here so you actually don't have to worry about overusing it or it making your hair feel like super dry and brittle. And then for hold product, you're definitely gonna want a gel that is not a jelly gel. So if you guys have seen my video on choosing the right gel type for your hair, I discuss the different types of gels. So there's some that are like super sticky that I like to call the jelly gels, and then there's some that are just regular gels who aren't as jelly. So for low porosity, I would definitely suggest a non-jelly gel, just because those jelly jelly ones tend to kind of sit on top of your hair. And again, for low porosity, buildup is what you're trying to avoid. So I really love the Wee Dad Heat and Humidity Gel. I love the consistency of this gel, super lightweight consistency, but definitely still gives me a really decent hold when I use a lot. They also have another version of this gel that is the same exact thing but with stronger holes. I want to try that one next because I find that in order to get a good amount of hold, I still need to use a lot of this. So I really want to see if the stronger hold version is even better and then that way I don't have to use as much product. But yeah, it is so great. Even though it's not jelly jelly like, it is very, very effective for curl definition. All right, so moving right along, let's now talk about high porosity. So again, just to remind you, high porosity hair is when your cuticles are wide open. So water is easy to come in, but also easy to come out. So if you have high porosity hair, you will notice that your hair really absorbs water quickly. So when you're in the shower, as soon as you put your hair underneath that shower water, your hair just gets drenched right away. They also say that high porosity hair dries really quickly. So as quickly as it gets drenched in the shower, as soon as you step out, your hair is like dry immediately. Which makes a lot of sense because again, those cuticles are open. So as easily as it gets in, is as easy as it can get out. I personally sometimes get a little bit confused about the drying time thing because I've also seen on some websites, they say that low porosity hair dries quickly because it repels water. Which also makes sense because the cuticle is closed. So I am still kind of up in the air about this, but it kind of does make sense again that when the cuticles are open, easy in, easy out. 
So if you do have high porosity hair, you will also notice that your hair is prone to breakage a lot easier and it gets really tangled really easily. So the best thing that you can always do to avoid breakage and any other like hair issue really is to make sure that you're moisturizing your hair properly. Like moisture is such a major key but you just gotta do it in the right way. So like I said, those cuticles wide open, what you gotta do is when you're putting that moisture in, you gotta try and seal it off on the top so that moisture is harder to come back out again. So what you will need is something opposite of low porosity hair. So you will need products that are a little bit more thicker in consistency, a little bit more buttery, and like just super, super rich with moisture because your hair is like literally just gonna take it all in, it's gonna absorb it. And then on top of that moisture product, you're then gonna wanna make sure that you're sealing it in with a more jelly type of gel. I've also read that you kinda wanna avoid glycerin products. I did an entire video all about glycerin, so if you're interested in hearing more about how that really works, like more in depth, then I will link it up here and in the description box below. Basically, glycerin works to help absorb things into your hair, which is why it would work well for low porosity, which has trouble absorbing things into the hair. With high porosity hair, it's really, really drying like a crazy amount of moisture into the hair and your hair is just taking it all in because those cuticles are wide open and then you'll actually sometimes find that your hair becomes over moisturized and that's when it will be limp and weighed down. So one of my favorite glycerin free products is this one right here. This is the Curls Blueberry Bliss Reparative Leave-In Conditioner. So if you're an OG on my channel, you will know that I have spoken about this since two years ago from when I big chopped. Like I love this thing. It's definitely an OG fave. It is a great leave-in conditioner, although it's not like super, super thick and it's not crazy buttery. It's really great for defining your curls and again, it's glycerin-free so you don't have to worry about over-moisturizing your hair. If you do have high porosity, another thing that will help to kind of seal those cuticles a little bit more are protein treatments. Like those will actually be your best friend. You'll notice that your hair just responds so nice to them. It really just brings life back to your hair. So one of my favorite protein treatments is actually kind of a hybrid between moisture and a protein treatment. And this is the Brio Geo Don't Despair Repair Hair Mask. This is the bomb.com. I love this stuff so, so much. Mostly because it's such a great mix between moisture and protein. So this is just a little sample size that I have, but <laughs> I already got the big size sitting in my Sephora cart because this is just so delicious. It's so good. So I forgot to mention that both of these are actually black owned. So I will go ahead and link all of the products in the description box below and I'll make sure to note which ones are black owned. Another protein treatment that I really love is this one here by Camille Rose. It's their Nangai and Subaki Strength Restore Protein Treatment. This is straight protein. So not as moisturizing as the one by Briogeo, but it's still very, very effective for repairing damage. And then the whole product that I would love to suggest for high porosity hair is the Camille Rose Curl Maker. This is so, so bomb for intense curl definition and amazing shine. Camille Rose is also black owned. But again, I will know all of that in the description box below. So yeah, those are my suggestions for high porosity hair. Now my situation with my crazy hair over here is a little bit weird. I'm honestly still trying to really determine what hair porosity I am because I've gone ahead and explained low and high porosity to y'all. I definitely have a characteristics for both. So that makes me wonder like, am I medium porosity? Cause I, I don't feel medium porosity cause my hair definitely is extreme when it comes to the characteristics that I do have. I have extreme low porosity characteristics as well as extreme high porosity characteristics. So I honestly don't know and I'm still trying to figure that out too. But what I do know is that a mix of the two types of products really works well for me. So the low porosity characteristics that my hair has is that it definitely takes a while to get wet in the shower. It's prone to build up and I also am definitely protein sensitive because I've gone a few weeks where I've used like protein, protein, protein and then it was just not good for my hair. It just did not respond well. And then the high porosity traits I have is that my hair dries super, super quickly. Like I'll be in the shower, it'll be drenched. And then as soon as I step out of the shower, poof, dry. So you know that kind of makes me feel like maybe I'm high porosity. My hair is also prone to breakage and also tangles very, very easily. So I sit here and I think, well, I have traits for low porosity and I have traits for high porosity. And I'm sure some of you are watching here saying, same sis, 
what do I do now? It can be a little bit frustrating and confusing, but again, this is why I'm telling you to always listen to your hair because it will tell you what it needs when it needs it. So for example, this past wash day, so about three days ago actually, I did this Briogeo deep conditioning mask, which is that protein don't despair repair hair mask, which is thebomb.com. My hair absolutely loved it. My hair really needed a pick me up and it did just that. It picked it right back up, gave it new life. And then I actually used a mixture of gels. So I used the Wee Dad Not So Jelly Gel, and then on top of it, I used the Curl Maker Jelly Gel. And I really found that that was a really, really great combo with my hair. Had it up in a pineapple last night, and then like refreshed it today. It was easily refreshable. My curls are happy. It's not frizzy. They don't feel dry. So honestly, sometimes I really have found that my hair kind of just needs a mixture of the two. I've also noticed that my hair needs a switch up like every week it does not like to have the same products applied the same way every single week which is crazy right but y'all know I've been on the hunt for my holy grail products and I find stuff that I love and then it works bomb and then I'm like all right let me try and recreate it the next week and then it comes out bomb but it's like oh but my hair is like a little bit unhappy like it's it's a little bit dry so I know that it's not the products themselves it's the fact that my hair likes to switch up so some weeks I'm doing low porosity some weeks I'm doing high porosity and then the other weeks I'm doing both so this is why I want you to yes be aware of low porosity and high porosity what that looks like and what your hair would need but also it's so so important to just make sure that you're listening to your curls because it'll tell you what it needs for example if you have just been going every Sunday and doing your morning your treatments but you find that your hair still is a little bit brittle it's a little weighed down it's just not working go ahead and try protein the next week like it's all about experimenting switching it up a little bit and then just really paying attention to how your hair responds so now that you're kind of more aware of the low porosity and high porosity characteristics you'll be better able to kind of listen to your hair and really understand what it's saying and what that might mean, like how you might need to switch up your regimen a little bit. So yeah guys, I hope this was super helpful and easy to understand. I honestly, like I said, I am still learning and experimenting myself. Go ahead and comment below, let me know your thoughts because I know so many people have different takes when it comes to porosity. So comment below, share the tea, let me see. I love to chat about natural hair. Y'all know I could do that all day. So just go ahead and spill all the tea below. And if you have any additional questions, you can comment those below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.